Hello and welcome to part two in this series on how you use Binance API. In the last video, we actually created an order to a pair of cryptocurrencies and it was all only by using the Binance API. But in this video, we're going to take a look at WebSocket Stream and we're also going to take a look at the WebSocket API. So if you have never heard the word WebSocket before, then it is actually just a connection that is going to be created between the client and the server. And it's really just to keep a, you know, a stream of data going back and forth so that we always have like a two way connection and a place where that could be helpful is when we look at the market data. So for example, right here, we have the Bitcoin up against the USDT. And then by using this class called market data WebSocket, we can go and get a stream of data from this specific pair. So to go and test it, we will just go and use the project that we used in the first video. And if you don't have that project, then just go and create a new Blazor server app and then go and install this Binance.spot NuGet packet. But I will just go and open the project. And this was actually all the stuff that we created in the first video. But what I want to do is to go to fetch data instead so that we're going to use this page instead of the index page. So first of all, we can just go and get rid of all the data in here or actually all the HTML and then delete all the things that you have inside the on initialized async method and also delete this property. And let's go and rename the title to web socket. And then let's go back to GitHub. And if I didn't mention it earlier, then we are actually just inside the GitHub repository for the Binance connector to .NET. And it's actually just this Binance spot that you're going to install as a new Git package. And then we have the description down here or the documentation on WebSocket streams. But what we can go and do now is just to go and copy all this code and then go and put it inside our on initialized async method. And as you can see, it doesn't recognize the market data web socket. So maybe we can go and say alt enter and then it actually suggests Binance.spot. So we're just going to use that. So when that is set up, we can see down here that it's going to write a line inside the console where it's going to throw the data inside. So we're actually able to go and test this already. So if we go to our website and you should have this console down here that opens with your project. And as you can see right now, nothing happens. But when we go to the fetch data and we open the console again, it will start the stream. So we actually get some data in here and we can maybe just see that the current price here is 27,558 right now. And then you can see comma and then it says 41 and sometimes it says 42. So we do have the price going up and down. So what we could do is just to go and try to fetch the price and then display it on the page and actually just let it run so that it updates the price all the time. And you can actually go and see it live. So we can see inside every block that we have here that the price is called P. So inside our data, we're just going to target P. So let's close the application and go to the project and we can actually go and test it. So what I want to do is to go and create a new property. So we just write prop and I do believe that it just came as a string. So let's just say string and then say live price. And I don't think we need the get and set. So what we can do now is to go and create a paragraph and then say that we want to have the live price in here. And just so that we could don't get the green underline, we can just go and make it a empty string to start with. The next thing we have to do is actually to go and add a new Git package called newtonsoft.json. And this is because the data in here is actually going to return some JSON to us. So to get the value from P, we need to go and pass the string so that we actually have an object where we can go in and fetch the value from P. So over in our solution explorer, let's right click the project and say manage NuGet packages. And then we want to browse for newtonsoft.json and it's actually just right here. So I'll just go and install the newest package. And when that is installed, we can just go and close it again. Then at the top of the file here, we're going to say that we're going to use the newtonsoft.json.link. So now what that allows us to do 
is to go and say that we want to have a J object called JSON data. And the way that we get it is by saying JSON object dot pass and then take our data inside the J object and pass it. So that actually give us a object that we now can go and get the values from. So now we want to say that the life price is equal to JSON data. And then we want to target the P and then close it. And we also need to remember to cast this. So we want to cast it as a string. So let's just go and get rid of this console right line. And then let's try to see if we actually get the life data into our life price variable. And I'll just go and put a dollar sign just to make it look a little bit better. So let's test the application and let's go into our fetch data and we actually don't get anything. So I'll just find out what is wrong. Okay. So what we need to do was actually to create this WebSocket on message received. We need to make that async. And then the next very important thing that we needed to do was actually to update the UI. This is the way you're going to do it in Blazor. And we cannot just say state has changed. We need to run that inside and invoke async. And that is going to be awaited. So that is also the reason why this has to be async. And I actually also removed the last part here where it says that it would return the task and it said completed task. So you can just go and remove that. But when all that is set up, we can go and test it again. And then we can go and say fetch data. And it will just take a second and then it will actually stream the price live up here. You can always go and format this. You don't want all the zeros. And then you actually have a live count of the Bitcoin price inside Binance. So if we go back and we take a look at the GitHub repository again, then if we go to the next step, now we actually just looked at the WebSocket stream. So if we take a look at the next step, the WebSocket API, then what this allows us to do is actually just to create a new order by using the WebSocket. So as we had in the stream up here, we don't need any API keys to go in and see the stream from the current price of the cryptocurrency, everyone can actually just go in and create a new WebSocket. But when it comes to the API, we're going to create a WebSocket API instead of the market data WebSocket. And as you can see, this WebSocket API is going to connect to the testnet. And I will be creating a part three video where I'm going to introduce you to the testnet. But when you use this WebSocket API, you also need the API key and you also need an API secret. So it's also like an API key. So when we make a new instance of the WebSocket API, we can go and just call it WebSocket. And then we can go and use it just like we did before to go and make a stream so that we actually see all the data that it's that is coming from the, in this case, testnet. And as you can see down here, we can also use the WebSocket to say account trade and then say new order async. And then we can go and give it the arguments of which symbol do we want to target. And do we want to buy or do we want to sell? And there's actually a lot of different options. You can also set a specific price. So you just create an order with a specific price. In the last video, we didn't specify this. So it was just set to zero. But we have to remember that this part is really just an example because if we just took all this code and put it inside a uninitialized async method in Blazor, then as you can see, it will just await five seconds and then it will actually disconnect again. So it's pretty much everything that we have done before just by using the WebSocket API. So for example, this await WebSocket account trade new order async, we might want to put that inside a on click event listener so that it first trigger when you actually click a button that may be say buy. And of course, the reason that we're going to need the API key and also the API secret when we use this WebSocket API is because that we now have the ability to go and create new orders. So we need to specify which account that we want to use, where when we just stream some data, we don't actually do these actions. So we don't need an API key. So I think that's enough for WebSockets. And in the next video, I will cover the testnet, also called the spot test network. But I hope you enjoyed this video and go and have a nice day. Bye.